Hey friends! Welcome back to my Books for Life channel! So the first thing I want to thank you guys for all the support and you guys came by my channel and you watched the panel that I was on for at Social Distance Book Fest and I am super excited and speaking of Social Distance Book Fest I'm back today with the After Social Distance book tag created again by our beautiful organizer Beautifully Bookish Bethany um, and so we're going to talk about some questions about our experience at Social Distance Book Fest I have a little announcement at the end and all the books that I have acquired from Social Distance Book Fest. It's a problem. I call it Social Distance Book Fest Madness and I'm probably going to be reading these books all the way till freaking June. So let's start with the first question. First question is a new author book you now want to check out. So this one's interesting because it's totally out of my comfort zone, but I really want to check out Grady Hendrix's The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying a Vampire. I saw him on the panel from Sherlock Holmes to Veronica Mars, uh, variations in the mystery thriller genre that was hosted by books like Whoa. And I'm really excited about that because he was so funny. And as we were researching, the synopsis really caught my eye. If you don't know, I'm one of the organizers behind at Social Distance Book Fest, so I spent hours pouring through synopses of all of these books, and I was captivated by this title. So I'm really excited to read some Grady Hendrix. Question number two. I have most entertaining panel. So that one is going to have to go to the Navigating Latinx Identity and Fantasy. Um, I had so much fun watching all those authors. I had so much fun watching Paola Guerrero host the panel. It was so chill. It was so relaxed. And even when Paola dropped out for a second, the authors were like, it doesn't matter. We're going to keep talking. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And yes, and from that panel, the book Blaze Wrath Games and Shatter Shaper Legacy from Amparo Ortiz and Daniel Jose Older. I need them in my life. I've requested Blaze Wrath Games. Cross your fingers for me, guys. <laughs> because it has Puerto Rican dragons, Puerto Rican MCs, and hello, Puerto Rican. I need it. All right. Question number three. Most insightful and interesting panel. So that would be Bree Hill's panel with the authors for Diversifying Romance. And I really, I don't read romance often, but when I do, I do like it to be diverse. Um, and so I was really excited to hear these authors' opinions about romance and how it's changed. Um, I really had so much fun watching Merle Wilsner talk about their book, uh, Something to Talk About. Um, and I really enjoyed listening to Vanessa Riley. She was so funny, so funny. And just the way she was calling out um, historical uh, readers and how sometimes they say that people of color didn't exist in the times that she presents um, and just her, their overall insight together about their different kinds of books and how they represented romance differently all across the board really inspired me and now I have a lot of romances that I definitely need to get my hands on and you'll see when my list of books I have acquired comes up. Then we have softest or sweetest panel. This goes to the panel hosted by Yogi with a book Family, Friendship, and Determination in Middle Grade Fiction. These authors were so soft. So soft. And like I almost cried during this panel hearing Ernesto and Claribel and L'Oreal and Reina and all the authors on there talking about their experiences and how their books came to be and their struggles and the community and their friendships. And I was just like, but <laughs> you're making me so soft. So yeah, I loved that panel and Yogi with a book was an excellent host. She was so knowledgeable about all of their books and I just I really enjoyed it. The people in the chat were being so cozy, so loving, so supportive and I was totally here for it. Then we have an author you would want to be friends with. So as I mentioned before I have Amparo from the Navigating Latinx Identity and Fantasy 
I am so hyped to read her book. She is the cutest person, so adorable. We had the honor of being her first ever interview, her first ever bookstagram photo, um, because her arcs weren't out yet by the time that we had our fest. And it was just super excited to see how excited she was and how happy she was to be participating and just her energy was so bubbly. The second person I need to be friends with is Romina Garber, the author of Lobisona. So the author of Lobisona, I need all of that energy, all of that motivation. I just, she was exuding excitement and energy and knowledge during her panel and I was here for it. I need it all. So I'm super excited to be reading Lobisona with the behind the scenes organizers of the fest in the upcoming month because yes so i'm really excited about that book so i need two friends amparo and romina then we have huh next question is an author you want to hear more from so this was an author that captivated me while i was researching the books for the fest um her name is megan megan campisi and she was on the panel of books like world same panel as grady hendrix and she wrote the book called Sin Eater. Um, I want to hear more about her books. It was so interesting listening to her talk about her books and why she wrote it in that era. It's like a girl who has to basically listen to people's sins and eat foods as penance for those sins um, and like things go wrong. It's like a horror thriller suspense business. And again, it's not really my zone, but watching these panels, I was like, I can get into the zone. So yes, Megan Campisi with Scene Eater, I need to know more. Then the next question is something that surprised you. Honestly, something that surprised me, I've mentioned it a couple times now, horror. I want all of the horror, all of the horror that was talked about in the fest is stuff that I want to read, which is normally not the case. Um, I want to read the Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. I want to read The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying a Vampire by Grady Hendrix. Megan Campisi's Sin Eater. C.L. Taylor's Strangers. Like, I just need all the mystery, all the thrillers, all the horrors in my life. I just need them. Which is not something that I normally do. And I'm hoping that I can record that experience. Reading vlogs aren't my thing, but I'm gonna attempt it for y'all. So, yeah. And then we have, how many books did you buy? Requests from library, add on Goodreads, or if you're me, how many books did you request on NetGalley? Because they were pushed back, so why not support them? Um, so let's start with the e-arcs that I have from NetGalley that I'm totally going to be reading. I have the Sin Eater arc by Megan Campisi. I have Cinderella's Dead by Callan Bayron. Um, which I'm 32% in and go pre-order it. I love it. It's Handmaid's Tale meets um, Cinderella. It's Smash the Patriarchy, FF Romance. Um, it's just amazing. Then I have Forest of Souls by Lori M. Lee. I'm super excited. Uh, Lori M. Lee was on my panel and the way she was talking about her book, about how she wanted to highlight female friendships because she normally doesn't see it in books. Friendships, girls, give it to me. Then I have The Dreamweaver by Reina Luz Alegre. I'm really hype about this book. Um, I'm really just happy to be part of Reina's book journey. It's been so awesome to see her debut out there and I'm happy about it. Then I have A Breath Too Late by Rocky Callan, which I know is a really deep book, but I really want to read it. I've heard it's going to save lives um, and I'm just here for books that save lives. Um, I have American Sweethearts by Adriana Herrera which I'm hype about because it's Dominican and it's bisexual and it's cultural and it's sexy and smutty and all the things. And I have Where Dreams Descend by Janela Angelis, which is supposed to be inspired by Phantom of the Opera, which, shocker, I've never watched the movies, I've never watched the play, I've never read any books if there are any. So I'm just going to go into Where Dreams Descend with an open mind because I know nothing. So those are the arcs that I have to get through. Now I have Ismay Williams's This Train is Being Held, which I'm excited to read because again, Dominican MC. Yes. For those of you who don't know, I'm half Puerto Rican, I'm half Dominican. So any Puerto Rican Dominican book I'm hype about. 
Then I have Ghost Squad by Claribel Ortega. It's also Dominican folklore, fireflies, food, Dominican culture, parents, families, grandmas, all of it, ghosts, cats, chunk. We all love chunk. Um, so yes, I started listening to the audiobook. The audiobook is fantastic. Um, and actually, we're going to be reading this later with the Gonzalo Reading Challenge. So like, if you have a copy, wait for us. Um, I have Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. I am like halfway through and I need to finish it. But Cemetery Boys is a story about Yadriel and Julian. Yadriel is a brujo and he raises a bad boy from the dead um, and falls in love with him. So love, ghost, Latinx atmosphere. We love it. We love it. Plus, Aiden is a total cinnamon roll. Then we have Category 5, which is also another horror, creepy, mystery thriller by Anne Davila Cardinal. Um, and I'm hyped. Right now I'm reading Five Midnights, which is the first one. Loving it. It couldn't get any more Puerto Rican. I was eating arroz con carne guisada and reading a Puerto Rican book. So, like, hello. Um, so, yes, Anne Davila Cardinal, Category 5. I have Something to Talk About by Merle Wilsner. Um, I'm ready for the WLW, Women Love Women story in here. Um, it's one of those fake dating tropes. Um, they get caught by the paparazzi. Paparazzi start murmuring and then they're like, well, what if we were together? And I absolutely loved hearing Merle Wilsner talk about the way they represented their book, the way they represented romance in their book, why they wrote their book, and why it was important that this representation was out there. So it made me even more excited to read this book. I also got this from a giveaway, so I was like really, really, really fortunate. Then I have Lobisona, which y'all might have seen in a haul. Um, I got sent this one from the publisher. Um, I'm really excited. We're going to actually start reading Lobisona tomorrow. Um, and I'm just hyped to read it with a bunch of friends um, that are equally as excited to read it as me. Um, this is Lobisona by my wish friend that I wish we could be real life friends, Romina Garber, because her energy is so exuberant. Um, and yes, so Lobisona tells the story of a girl who seems to be illegal in both her country and her culture when she finds out that she's a Lobisona, which is totally not allowed um, in her heritage slash magic system. Um, and I'm really excited to see how that develops. I heard there's some insta love in here too. Mm -hmm. All right. Now I have Dark and Deepest Red by Anna Marie McLemore. It's good so far. I'm so excited. Um, it has a lot of like Greek slash Latinx culture mixed in here um, with uh, the retelling of Red Shoes um, and just listening to Anna Marie McLemore talk about their story and how they wrote their books and what inspires them just and I kind of think like the cover looks a little bit like Anna Marie. I think so. Then I have both books by Taylor K. Mejia, which I had the honor of interviewing on my channel and I'm still freaking out. Um, is We Set the Dark on Fire and We Unleash the Mercy of the Storm. This is the new one, but you need to start on this one. Um, they're both equally amazing. Um, and yes, I've read them both, as you can tell, tabs everywhere. Um, I hope to review them sometime soon, whether written or on video, so you'll see them. And I have The Sound of Stars by Alekia Dow. Um, I'm hyped because this is the author that I wanted to hear more from, which, yes, the author that I wanted to hear more from, um, The Sound of Stars. Um, I'm super excited to say that Alekia just got given more book deals, uh, one being The Kindred, and the other one is a YA book that's not yet titled. I'll probably put the details around here in a corner. Um, but The Sound of Stars was beautiful. It was a journey through music and books, two friends, demisexual, ace representation, um, just anxiety, um, representation and just overall sci-fi smash like the elitism and the racism and the colorism um, of the world and I just the sound of stars it literally I saw myself in so many ways in this book and like if you haven't read it the audiobook is amazing it's free on Scribd and just go get it um now those are all books that I either owned or requested on NetGalley now we go to the ones that I bought, which is okay. I only bought five books, only five books. Okay, 
So let's start with some horror, which I kept talking about. I want the horror. So the first one I bought was Socko Girls by Claire Legrand. Um, I've heard nothing but good things about this from my friends. Um, and I really want to read it. I heard there's Women Love Women in here. I heard there's horror. I heard there's amazing like atmospheres. So I'm here for it. And like, okay, that cover looks good no matter what picture I take of it. I've tried. Um, then the other ones that are still in the box and I waited to open with you guys are, I ordered these from bookshop.org. So here we go. I have Into the Tall Tall Grass by L'Oreal Ryan. Um, I'm really excited. I heard her talk about her book and the panel, um, just grandmas and family and adventures and magical realism and I've been eyeing it and like look at the cover it's glittery then I have flashed by Zoe Castillo aka Soraida Cordova um which I also should be receiving incendiary soon in the mail um so like that's another book that I bought um and so flashed is supposed to be a romance novel by Zoe Castillo and I've heard that this woman is the magician of writing um she's the queen of the latinx world and i needed to experience it so i'm going to read flash then i bought scavenge the stars by tara sim i heard there's a spec representation in here and it's fantasy which i've recently been getting into if y'all haven't noticed apparently my taste in books are changing um, and so I'm really excited to read Scavenge the Stars by Tara Sim. I still haven't had a chance yet to watch her panel, but I totally want to watch it so I can see what she had to say about her book. And the last book that I bought is, oh wow, this is a monster book. Grady Hendrix's The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. Again, another horror book. Um, and how beautiful is this cover look at it um i'm really excited book club ladies get interested in this man in the city turns out he's a vampire there's discussions about class and domestic living and yeah a lot of discussion on society from what i heard in the panel with grady hendrix um so it's not only horror but it's also a discussion of how things used to be i'm pretty sure this book takes place like 80s 90s um so i'm excited to see what i find inside these pages and that's it for my books that i bought i know it was a lot and last but not least, would you attend Social Distance Book Fest in the future? Well, let me think. Totally! Um, I'm one of the organizers behind the fest, so obviously I would love to go back. Um, I was also really impressed, even though I was behind helping make it, how intimate the whole fest was in the chats and how I felt like I was hanging out with friends online all day. Um, I was super excited to work with the authors. Um, we are actually in talks of coming back for 2021, which leads me to the announcement that Bethany shared yesterday, but I will share it here in case you haven't seen it. For now, we are going to keep you with some bite-sized events under our program Bookmarked, uh, which is going to bring interviews, fandom meetups, talks with readers, content writers, content creators, authors, and everybody in the bookish community to your home. So you'll be able to watch them online just like you did our fest. We already started planning our first event. I will post the banner around here somewhere. Um, I will officially announce it on Twitter as a Twitter voice when we have an actual date scheduled for it. But for now, just know that this will be our first event and we are really excited about it. And Autumn has been working really hard to make it an event that you are going to love. So with all of that said, I'm super excited that you came to watch the After Social Distance Book Fest tag. Thank you to Bethany for making this amazing video. I hope you loved all the things 
fest and that you come join us at our future events and that you found some recs from all the books that I decided to pick up because of the social distance book fest madness. So I hope to see you all next time. Bye-bye!